Happy day after update everyone! <laughs> Many of you have had quite some time now to experience the Kerbal Space Program V0.1.3.0 update, which henceforth I'll just be referring to as Patch 3 for, you know, obvious reasons, and hopefully you have found the game experience improved. Players have been reporting better frame rates, but there's more than just performance gains on the menu. The developers have introduced some new parts to play around with in this update, which will expand our spacecraft design options. These parts are three new engines, docking ports, and the air brake from KSP-1. Although, I did notice that this isn't without a few bugs. For example, it doesn't look like you can deploy the air brakes in the vehicle assembly building. Uh, not quite sure how that one was missed. <laughs> in addition to the new parts and performance updates, the Flight HUD UI is now rescalable via player settings, which is a very, very welcome addition for players who use high resolution screens. In particular, as a 4K user, I've been super excited for this one. Flight bugs relating to decoupling have been resolved, so hopefully there'll be less RNG when it comes to getting things to orbit. The developers have also addressed the very annoying issue where vehicles would sometimes just fall through terrain, so hopefully that means no more Mohole Interstellar Cannon. <laughs> One particularly frustrating bug in the vehicle assembly building has been fixed. You can now put down procedural parts after picking them up. Wings should now be stronger as well. The devs have added a new automatic multi-joint system for wing attachments, which will hopefully result in less floppy aircraft. Furthermore, the developers have fixed the bug that resulted in asymmetrical separation forces on radial decouplers, so now you can have a nice, satisfying Korolev cross without the boosters separating at different velocities. While these are some of the major highlights, the developers have also made numerous other fixes and improvements to enhance the gameplay experience. A comprehensive list of all the changes can be found in the patch notes, which I have left in this video's description if you want to have a read. Oh, and also, shameless request, if you are enjoying the video so far, then don't forget to drop a like down below, since it really helps me to stay above water in the tides of the algorithm and all that stuff. Anyway, let's quickly dive a little bit deeper into the newly added parts. I'm actually not going to go too far in depth with the new parts that were present in KSP-1, since I'm guessing you're already familiar with these ones. But we now have the shielded docking port back, and the inline docking ports for the Mark II space plane pieces, and the small diameter parts, and of course the aforementioned air brakes. But new engines! These are low thrust but high ISP engines, so you can think of them as a good bridge between the normal Methalox engines and the hydrogen engines in terms of their efficiency. They're all essentially the same sort of thing, with the main difference being their diameter. Here's the biggest one, the tuba engine in action. The tuba has, I think most obviously, an extending engine bell. In fact, all three of the new engines have an extendable bell. Real rockets often use extendable bells in their upper stage engines, for example the SLS, in order to make the engine as compact as possible when not in use. In rocketry, the bigger the bell, the more efficient in a vacuum. Now I am massively oversimplifying there, of course. <laughs> the difference between the Raptor and Vacuum Raptor engines is a good example of this. One cute feature is that the new engines are called the tuba, the trumpet, and the cornet, and they make a noise that sounds like their instrument namesakes when deploying. And don't worry about their large size being a potential hindrance when trying to use them on landers, as if you deactivate the engine, the bell retracts again, so you can kind of, I don't know, put supplementary dedicated landing engines for that final last phase of touchdown, or you know, just try and kill your velocity right before you hit the surface, and then retract the engine and hope that it retracts before you hit the ground. I can see a lot of, <laughs> I can see a lot of fun potential with these things. Looking ahead to future updates now, the developers' focus is on addressing game-breaking bugs and refining gameplay mechanics. Their roadmap includes upcoming updates that will introduce science collection, a new mission system, and parts progression to the game. In a dev update that came out several hours after Patch 3 dropped, Nate Simpson acknowledged that there are still critical bugs and areas that require refinement, such as wobbly rockets, overactive control surfaces, and strange SAS behavior. They are actively working on addressing these issues to provide a better gaming experience. The developers will be sharing their top 10 most wanted bugs next week. I'll be sure to cover that either in a KSP video or a Space This Week video that'll prioritize the issues that are most important to the community. The devs are going to be encouraging players to report any bugs encountered via the Bug Report subforum, as player feedback is invaluable to them. Although the Patch 3 update has brought many fixes, it has also introduced a new issue with aerodynamic drag after decoupling. 
The developers are aware of this bug though, and they are already working on a hotfix. The aim is to release a stable hotfix in the coming days. Unfortunately, the fixes for orbital decay and SOI transit trajectory bugs didn't make it into this update. However, significant progress has supposedly been made in addressing these issues, and the fixes will be included in an upcoming update. The developers understand the anticipation for re-entry and heating systems. They are working diligently on both aspects. Re-entry heating visual effects are expected to arrive before the thermal systems and heat-related part destruction. The goal is to ensure that re-entry heating is both visually stunning and performs well without compromising the recent frame rate gains. The next update, V0.1.4.0, <laughs> will continue to focus on foundational bug fixes and playability improvements. The developers will report on their progress as they work through their critical bugs list. But enough of patches! What about the roadmap with the actual features that'll start separating KSP2 from its predecessor? The first headline roadmap update, which includes science, missions, and an R&D center, is still several months away. Big oof. The developers have a lot of work planned for the DOT2 update, including deep architecture work, bug fixing, new systems, and plenty of new content. Until then, they will continue to release incremental updates, aiming to eliminate all of the major game-breaking bugs. But yes, that's pretty much all I have to say about the patch. I didn't really want this video to go on too long, so I thought I'd keep it nice and short and sweet. I know that patch 3 hasn't been quite as big as the last two we had, and to be honest, it's really disappointing that the orbital decay and the SOI change trajectory bug is still there. I was really hoping these, especially the latter, would be gone. Here's hoping they'll be gone in patch 4. A lot of people are concerned about the slow update progress of the game, especially considering how far after its original 2020 release date we are. It is really important to bear in mind that there is a ton of stuff that's been developed that simply isn't accessible to players. We have on good authority knowledge that there is a version of KSB2 out there that isn't publicly available that has all of the colony building, route planning and automation, and resource gathering. I guess because this isn't as stable as it needs to be for a public release, and there's probably a few key assets that aren't quite ready yet. There's also loads of assets in the current Kerbal Space Program 2 game files for the second star system. The planets all seem to have been largely made, to the point where data miners were able to find some of the easter eggs that are on the surface of these planets. I won't spoil them here, but yeah, some of them look really, really cool. And there's like story elements as well. I'm going to play you this audio file, which is buried in the current KSP2 game, but so far doesn't look like it's actually accessible when playing, but it definitely sounds like it'd be used for story-like purposes or when achieving something significant for the first time. I don't know. Give it a, give it a listen. I'd love to hear what you think.
Yeah, what on earth do you think that could be? I'd really love to hear theories on this one. I am super curious. Or maybe I'm just dumb and it is in the game, but I swear, uh, I feel like I would have heard about this by now. Is that a pun? Heard about it? No, it's not. Let's move on. Uh, actually, that about wraps up my coverage of this update. I only really covered the big stuff here. There have been lots of little bug fixes, and I didn't really feel like reading out every single minute feature of this patch. Again, if you want to read the entire list, then I've linked the full patch notes in this video's description. In the description, you'll also find a link to my Patreon, and if you choose to sign up, you'll see your name show up alongside these wonderful folk. You can also gain the same fame by signing up to my YouTube membership page. Actually, I shared a preview of my next KSP2 video with my patrons and members. It's like a deep dive video essay into the problem of wobbly rockets and why I hate Kerbal. Ooh, I'm gonna leave that ambiguous. <laughs> anyway, that's all the time I have. So I'll sign off for now. Uh, goodbye. There's videos on the screen. I should have mentioned that. Okay, bye everyone.